Hi everybody, Paul here again. Okay, what I'd like to do today is I'd like to show you folks how to build an arrow for either a compound bow or a crossbow. Now today I'm going to be building an aluminum arrow, but most all of this will still apply to a carbon arrow. Um, I, I really like building my own custom arrows. I can make whatever color and size combination I want with shafts, veins, feathers. You know, maybe you want to customize the FOC. Um, but there's a lot of advantages to just doing it yourself. Um, and I, as far as feathers and veins, I, I always use um, colors that you will not find, you know, outside, like this iridescent pink and like this iridescent yellow. Um, I use these colors because it just makes it a lot easier for me to find the arrow. When I do my crossbow arrows, I'll put three of these on it. And when I do my uh, compound bow arrows, I'll put two of these hot pinks on and one of the iridescent because I need a cock feather. So again, that's just some of the advantages of just being able to, and of being able to make your own uh, arrows up. Um, but it saves me money and time not having to rely on a, on a bow shop to make them for me. Plus if I make them, I know they're done right. So it's just a win-win situation in every way. Now I've been hunting 20, about 25 years and when I first started out, this was the type of aluminum shaft um, that I used. This, all, this is all they had. And you can see the cone shape on the end of this. And basically all you did was you took your rear knock, not this exact same type, but a rear, you'd take your knock and you would glue it on. But the challenge of it was you had to get it glued on, um, you know, in a timely manner and you had to get it adjusted so that everything was lined up with your feathers in relation to your arrow rest. So it's kind of a one shot deal. I also had a lot of problems with these knocks. Uh, that I would use on this system cracking. So if you do buy, uh, if you go out there to buy used arrows, um, you don't get this type of system. You do not want this system. The system that you want is this type of system, okay? This is a Easton uh, Super Knock system. And this is a Easton Super Bushing, and they just, uh, this is a bushing that's just glued right into the shaft and then you've got your knock and this knock just presses right in okay this is a glueless knock system and the beauty of this is you just once you push it in then you can just you can turn that with this tool or with a pair of pliers and make super fine adjustments for however you need that knock to be on the arrow um, see here the, what I've used over the years has been the double X 75 series with the Easton these are going to be more than adequate for any kind of hunting or target shooting that you're doing they're strong um, you know you bend them they flex they flex back straight the tolerances of the straightness of an arrow like this is plus or minus two thousandths of an inch which which is less than the thickness of your hair which is pretty amazing but I've never had any trouble with these. Um, the double X 75, that actually stands for the type of alloy that this is. This is not 100% aluminum. This has other metals in it to make the arrow an, actually an alloy, okay? And the, the actual alloy of, of the double X 75 just means it's a 70, 75, dash t9 alloy and the tens tensile strength of this thing is 96,000 pounds per square inch so it's super strong and it, it's gonna it's gonna do what you need it to do and they've got a permanent finish that's never gonna come off okay the other thing with these arrows is you're gonna notice there's four digits on here and it's real simple all this means is the uh, you can see it says 2315 on this one the first two numbers, the 23, that simply means that the outside diameter of this shaft is 23 64ths of an inch, okay? 
So shafts come in different sizes, but this is 23 64 of an inch outside diameter. The second number, the 15, that simply means that the, the wall of the shaft here is 15 thousandths of an inch thick. So um, that's just some of the basics uh, about, about uh, the aluminum arrow shafts. I think uh, I'll, I'll stop there and let's get building an arrow. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut our arrow shaft, okay? So just get your tape measure and take a regular pencil and just make a fine mark with the pencil. Okay, this will do a great job. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is I cut all my arrows with this little tube cutter here. I don't think you need to waste your money buying a, a $200 power arrow shaft cutter. I just, I just think it's a waste of money. This will cut aluminum and carbon. Now, just one caveat about these is, uh, well, a couple. You can actually just pick one of these up at Home Depot, you know, for 12 bucks. Um, they're cheap, and but it's going to do a good job. Um, but this has two bodies. It's got you got this body here and then you've got the rear part here with the wheel on it that moves in and out okay and what you have to be mindful of is as you can see the rear part will actually it'll move from right to left okay so when you're cutting the arrow you got to be mindful of that so when you're holding this and cutting the shaft you don't want to be holding both of these sections you want this you want to make sure that this is sitting flat okay so we'll just go ahead and slide our arrow in and line that cutting wheel up on our mark and then just snug it down real lightly okay and again just hold the bottom of this part on it right here and then we're not going to take the tube cutter and turn the tube cutter itself around it. That'll take a lot longer. You won't get as accurate of a cut. You're going to actually just hold the shaft with your hand and you're just going to start spinning it. Okay? Just keep spinning. And just take your time doing this. Don't rush it. Okay? We'll snug it in a little more. Because if you rush it, you might end up, uh, you know, crushing that tube. You don't want to do that. And yeah, this is taking a little longer, but it's going to do a great job. And you can also, there's, there's different ways you can hold this on. You can hold it either like this, or you can actually just grab the very end of the shaft and spin it. Whichever is most comfortable for your hand. Just keep spinning it. Then you'll hear it cutting, and you'll actually hear it when it gets towards the end and it's ready to break off. You'll you'll hear by the sound it makes. Snug it in just a little, turn just a little more. Okay. And we got a nice, nice, clean cut, you know, beautiful. Okay, what we want to do next is you're going to have the outside of that thing's going to feel real smooth, okay? But you're going to have a burr on the inside, and you've got to remove that burr. So I've got this tool here called a sure cut, and all you do is you just lightly spin that. So just hold your arrow shaft real steady and just spin that. And you, or you can go back and forth like so. And that's gonna remove that, that's gonna remove that fine burr. Okay? And then just the last thing I'll do is I'll take like thousand grit sandpaper and I'll just just rub the end of that just a little 
it'll feel a little burrish on the end. So I just like to smooth that out too. Okay. Perfect. Then we're ready to move on. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is just take some nail polish remover, which is acetone. Take a Q-tip. Kind of getting low here, but just uh, wet the end of that Q-tip and clean the inside of that shaft. You can spin the shaft if you want right on it. But just clean up inside there. Okay, do it on both ends. There's the one we cut, you can see how dirty that is. So just keep cleaning it until you don't get any more, any more of that. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna glue in our front aluminum insert into the shaft, okay? This is gonna go in the front of the arrow. Um, make sure that you've got the right size. So just test it first. It's not gonna go in completely all the way when you test it, but um, when, you're, when you go to um, put it in all, you're gonna actually push it in all the way once you got the hot on it, okay? So what I found that a lot of people will do is they'll hold this while they put their hot glue on, okay? And there's always a chance that you could bend this with pliers and you might mar it up. So I prefer to actually just take a field tip and just screw it in, okay? And then just hold on to the field tip with your pliers, okay? Now what I'm using here, this is a, it's, a, it's called a Ferrotite and this is a hot melt. It's waterproof. It's made by boning. Okay, and it's really, it's all I've ever used. It's really great stuff. So I would, I would highly recommend that. So all you have to do is, you got your propane torch here. You don't need a big flame. Just a, just a small flame's fine. Then, Lay your arrow so you know you got the front, okay? And then just go ahead, start heating that up. Make sure your glue's sticking out far enough from the paper here too, okay? So just warm that thing up real good. Then take your glue, you can actually like run it around like like that, or you can just run it across the surface. You'll kind of see it bubbling up, you kind of see it bubbling up on the surface. But just get a good amount on there, don't, don't be afraid to put too much on, okay? Then once you get that, put it in, and then just press it down and it'll push in the rest of the way, okay? Then just get a paper towel, fold it up, just spin it so you get that excess glue off. Then go ahead and spin it off your field tip, and then just take and spin it again in paper towel just to clean it up, okay? And that's seated in there real tight now, okay? And you can see I got to push down in all the way. Okay. Okay, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna glue our feathers or veins or what they call fletching. And I will just show you that the front insert that I glued in, you see how sharp that front edge is? Okay, well, I did put the exact same type of insert in the rear. This is what I use for my crossbow because it's a flat knock and it gives me a threaded a threaded in, inside so that I can pull my arrows out of the target. But that edge, that sharp edge, I knocked that off and I show how to do that in another YouTube. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to take some nail polish remover or acetone and we're going to want to clean this shaft real good for where the feathers are going to go. Okay, that will dry real quick. Okay, now um, let's see here. You definitely need a good fletching jig. This is the jig that I've used for the last 25 years. This is a Bitsen burger. It's German made. This thing is made like a tank. Um, it's it's going to last forever. You're going to buy it once. You bought it for life. And it's very easy to use. It's got real strong, uh, high quality magnets here. And the only caveat here is when you buy your clamp, you need to make sure that you buy the correct clamp for the type of feather you're using. Now I use right hand feathers, okay? And the clamp will say on it that it's, it says right here that it's right. So uh, if you use left hand feathers, you need to make sure you use a left clamp. If you use straight feathers, you need to use a, a, a straight clamp as well. But um, <clears throat> what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take, and this is a fletching knock adapter. And I actually, I make these and I sell these on eBay. I did another YouTube on these. And you're gonna simply take this and screw this in. And you're just gonna snug it down real tight. And then, oh, okay, the jig, actually, this is set up for three feathers right now. And you simply, uh, you know, we'll, we'll drop our shaft in, okay? And what'll happen is we'll glue a feather on, and after that feather is done, we'll take our clamp off, and then we will spin the bottom here. And I don't know if you heard that click, but it'll actually index into uh, position. And then when we're done with the, you know with the, that feather, then then we'll remove the clamp again, and then and it'll lock into position. So that way, it's uh, perfectly the feathers are perfectly symmetrical on the shaft. So all we have to do is we just open up our clamp, and we're gonna lay our feather in here. Now you'll have to determine how far you want the back of your feather from the rear of your arrow. Typically, typically from, you know, a person will take uh, the rear of the feather and space it anywhere from two to one inches. So um, I know that when I make up my arrows for my crossbow that they've got to be the rear of the feather, when I put it in here, has got to be on this fourth notch. And so you just make sure that your feather is laid down inside this clamp properly. And I got that lined up on the fourth mark there. Let's see how it's lined up flat against there. That's what you want. Then you're going to take your glue. This is Saunders glue. Uh, this is the only type of glue I've ever used. This stuff will never let you down. Uh, I think the drying time on this will be like 20 minutes and then I'll start on another feather. So we just simply hold our clamp and you want to make sure you want to make sure that you put put enough on, but you don't want to put too much on. And just take your time, and the more you do this, you'll get the feel of it. You just don't want it running over the edges. Okay, put our cap back on. And just check again. Locked in position. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to just take the rear of your clamp here and just bring it right down 
bring it right down to this this area where it stops here put it onto the magnets and then you're just gonna push it right into it <laughs> okay and just push that sucker down real tight so you get a good solid clamped fit and then just release it and as you could see there was zero movement in that and that's because of that fletching knock adapter so uh, we'll wait for that to dry I'll do two more feathers and then we'll go to the next step okay so we have all of our feathers glued on um, we're ready to take it out of the fletching jig so we just squeeze our clamp and we'll take off our knock adapter okay and these things are just glued beautifully everything's you know everything's symmetrical okay so there's just two more things you need to do the first thing is you're gonna to want to take some glue now you're gonna put just a little bit of glue right here on the end of the feather you know there there and there and same thing with the back put some glue right on the back there okay just so all these edges are glued down then once that dries then I use a product this is called dry tight it's made by boning this will make your feathers completely waterproof if you don't do this when you take this when you take these turkey feathers out into the field the feathers will if they get wet you know from the rain the turk the feathers will lay down you don't need to do this with veins but you've got to you've got to use something and I've used this stuff for like 25 years it works fantastic and it just it goes on real easy you just it's got a brush on the end and it's just like water and it's clear so just you can just you know don't be afraid to put too much on just start globbing it on and you can see exactly if you get the right lighting you can see it real good okay so you're gonna just take that just cover that feather completely up with this stuff and you could be out in a driving rain and it'll it'll stay looking just like that it's amazing stuff the water will just run right off of it and so just make sure you do that to both sides of each feather okay so and then you've got a completed arrow so I hope this helps somebody out there God bless you have a great day and bye for now